right, everybody, welcome in to our high school preview. Very excited to announce a couple of very special guests we have in today, Mr. Trent Davis from Etowah and Mr. Brady Troop from Etowah, and as always, Jay Green, who is our Etowah guy, who's on the sidelines with him each week. Um, last week, huge victory uh, over Crossville, 49-7, actually to start region play, start off 1-0. Jay, what did you see from a defensive perspective in that game? The defense played solid. They held a uh, Crossville to 107 yards of total, total offense. Total? Yeah, they had 107 total. Crossville did. Jesus. So, uh, the defense played well. Uh, I mean, Crossville didn't do – they were kind of vanilla on offense. They didn't do too much. I mean, they would hit us with a pass every now and then. But overall, the defense dominated, you know, and, I mean, they scored late. But, I mean, defense overall played good. So. Um, i seen Brady's interview with Gads and Times that – Coach wasn't too – you or Coach wasn't too happy at the start of the game, I'm sure. No, we started off really slow, kind of came out there a little complacent. and uh, But I think towards the game, as it went on, I think we got better. Trent, what about you, man? What did you say? Uh, I know you had a big game, but, of course, when you get up like you do, you don't get to play the second half much. We uh, we messed up early, and uh, we had to fix some stuff. You know, we wasn't going to our speed, our normal speed. We was just taking it lightly. And uh, we picked it up in the second half, and that's basically what we just went up big. What some of the things you guys have seen? Have y'all 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 already watched the film on Sardis? I'm sure. What some of the things you've seen from them? Their defense since um, the challenge. Their defense. Um, they look very aggressive. You know, they blitz a lot. Um, but I just think we got to come to the game with the same mindset. Got to stay focused. We got to have a good week of practice, and Coach Holiday's going to get us prepared. So. We're going to go in that game, I think, feeling confident. And um, now they beat Southside last week in a very scrappy game. So um, I think it's going to be interesting to see if you guys can start out hot like you did last week because it was 35 to nothing at halftime. Is that right? Yes, so, sir. Yeah, if you guys can do that, I think the way that defense is playing, you guys will be looking good Sure. going into that game for sure. Jay, defensively, talk to me. For Edwall? Yeah, against Sardis. Uh, be quite honest, I think they're still going to be dominant. You know, I, I don't know what Sardis offense looks like. I haven't seen any film them, but what I've seen from Edwall, the way they swarm to the ball, um, <clears throat> the way the corners and DBs play, you know, just make sure the coverage is they, they don't bust any assignments. I mean, because Edwall's front seven, I mean, they're uh, tenacious. Like, they're very aggressive. They get after it. And, uh, I expect I don't expect anything less. I mean, I expect them to dominate. Dude, to lose so many people like they did and play like they are, man, that is it's unbelievable. Yeah, you know? Trent uh, playing both ways has that affected you any? Yeah, it is. No, have you cramped up? Yeah, I cramped up the first game. I ain't cramped up since the first game though. Um, it's been it's been pretty tiring a little bit, but I usually go straight from offense to defense, and it ain't that bad. But usually when I go into them later drives and the longer drives on offense. It's gonna start kicking in to me, but last game I didn't really get tired, so I was because you was already chilling on the sidelines with your pants <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brady, we ain't seen you knock nobody out on defense yet. Is that coming down down the pipe or not? Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not unless we have to have you. Well, I appreciate you guys sitting in, looking no forward to the game. Then that game's uh, at home, correct? That's no, right. That's ours. Okay. 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 Y'all might go eat at the Lions then afterwards. I like mm -hmm. it. Appreciate you guys. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, everybody. Uh, also got a special guest in. We're about to break down Westbrook versus West End, uh, Battle of the West. You know, um, you guys are coming off. This is John Reese Ballou, plays for Westbrook. John Reese, you guys are coming off a, a win against Vinemont, 35 to nothing. Um, West End is coming off a, a cartoonish stop loss, 65 44 to Cleveland. Um, you playing in the secondary. Uh, with Pierce, their quarterback, and Jeremiah Robertson, their receiver. What are some of the things you've seen on film that stuck out to you about their offense because they obviously can score a lot of points? Uh, the main thing I've seen that stuck out to me was that they pass a whole lot more than anything. And that barely any run is just main pass. And um, this will be the first time you've played a team like that because even when you guys played um, Kusa, they didn't throw a whole lot. No, Very every, limited. Every team we played so far has mainly been run. But you playing safety, this has got to be music in your ears, dude. <laughs> it is. We might see some of those well-known John Reese Ballou collisions that we've been looking for. <laughs> Which we did see some last week, though. And, and I think Dave said it best. He's like, man, John Reese looks fantastic, but 
they're getting them down. I mean, they're tackling them before they can get in the <laughs> secondary. So, so we've been waiting on this. And last week, you actually scored a touchdown in the game on, on, a, on a straight dive play. Uh, talk about that as your first career touchdown. It was very exciting. <laughs> that, but it, what was that like for real? Flip around and get to play some offense and finally score. I was. Uh, I didn't know what to do after. I was very confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so. And when you play for a team like West West End and you know that they're going to be pass heavy like they are, talk about your preparation uh, that you do at safety because you're basically going to be the last line of defense, kind of like the quarterback on defense. Uh, well, we pretty much just play like everybody uh, that we've already played. We practice for everything that they do and just study the film. And you guys get that look in practice um, with your scout team, I'm sure, mm -hmm. throwing it all over the field. Uh, all right. John Reese. Um, so offensively, um, West End is struggling offensively. I mean, they're giving up almost 60 points a game. So I'm sure your offense is definitely ready to take the field against them. <laughs> uh, so if they, if if everything holds like it is, and you guys only gave up, you know, you had a shutout last week. Your defense has actually gotten better each week. And last week you had a shutout. Um, this should be a good game. You guys go in there and you know don't do anything crazy. This would be. Pretty interesting game, and I think you guys will get out with a win. Yes, sir. Mr. John Reese Ballou, thank you for sitting in with us, brother. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to move on to our next game, which is going to be <coughs> probably the game of the year in the, in the state of Alabama. Uh, our game of the week, for sure, next week in the state of Alabama is going to be 2-0-5 versus 3-0 Collinsville. It's going to be at 5, Fife's home opener. Fife is sitting at 2-0, beat section 49 nothing last week, beat Geraldine 29 nothing the week before. Collinsville is 3-0. and They've put up 150 points in three games. Um, Caleb Jones coming off like an unheard of performance. He had seven touchdowns, about, I'm not sure how much yard, what would you say, like close to 400, 500? Yeah, yeah, in the air and on the ground, yeah. Probably about 400, or I wouldn't dare to say right outside 500 yards of total offense. Had an interception in the game, um, several tackles. I don't know what else you can do as a football player on the field that he did the other night. And they beat a very good team. Was it like 54 to 20 or 28 or something like yeah, that? Yeah, 54 to 20, I think. Yeah, okay. So they beat a very good North Sand Mountain team. Bad. Um, man, a lot of talk, you know, around the state. Is is, is this Collinsville's year? This is Collinsville's 100th year of football. They have a lot of legacy players. They have a lot of good things going. But there's still that one major roadblock. And anybody in 2A will tell you, and that one major roadblock is Fife. Fife still does what they do. They run the ball right at you. They know they're going to do it. The other team knows they're going to do it. The fans <laughs> know they're going to do it. And it's still effective. Zach Pyron, absolutely phenomenal football player. Um, Ike, great football player. Their offensive line, Levi Carroll, Lyles, all these guys are great football players. They run as a unit. It's very hard to get a lot of game film and see if Collinsville will be able to stop them because every team Collinsville's played at this point has been like a spread type team. And um, so when you play Fife, it, 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 you can take all that footage and, and get rid of it because it means nothing compared to what Fife does. The key matchup to me that I want to see in this game is can Collinsville defensively stop what Fife does offensively right at them? Mm. Now, you've seen Collins will play. Um, yeah. I want you to talk about what you've seen from their defense the other night specifically. Well, in Collins, well, you know, like you said, it was a completely different type of offense. The, the uh, North Sand Mountain, you know, that was spreading out and they were throwing all over the yard and had a quarterback there from Chase 150 yards to play. But <laughs> uh, as, far, as far as getting ready to line up for this type of offense, I'm sure – uh, Coach Willingham, is, he's getting these boys fired up because he knows the type of game they're about to have to play. And you're going to have to have a punch yourself in the mouth type of game right here where you get those boys on the line ready to play because it's going to come from the front seven right there. That's where the key is going to be because, like we said all along, Collinsville's got all the athletes they need. But this game's going to be one where it's going to be a grit and it's going to be one where you're going to have to put that mouthpiece in and get ready to go. And, you know, like we said, we haven't seen it yet, but I would like to see the mentality. Now, the linebackers are not, they can flow. You know, their linebackers can flow. They can cover in space, but we're about to find out if they can fill a hole. Yeah, because that's what you're going to know early and often because, it, it, like I said, it's going to be no mystery uh, what's going to happen. Talk about Caleb Jones from what you've seen out oh, of him. Now, what kind of problems he presents to the five defense? Yeah, man, a kid like that, that's just a scary kid to play. I mean, when you see a kid like that on film, uh, you know, you just stay up at night having nightmares about it because uh, the kid can make throws. And 
you know, I was asking him the other night about whether he likes playing like a fullback because that's what he reminds me of when he runs, but yet he's still got the mind. He's still the heady type of quarterback that can sit back there and make the reads. And, you know, I guess stuff like that type of stuff, they'll get you recruited by Navy. I wouldn't know about that, but I guess <laughs> I'm not to do that. But he, uh, he's just such a heady player. And he's just the most impressive thing I saw, as much as the physical attributes and the, the, the smarts about reading and making the right decisions, was his, he's, he's a field general. He's out there leading that offense and the defense, for that matter. He's out there making, you know, he's out there making plays on defense also. But the way he gets in a huddle and he controls the huddle and he's in there and it, you know, when when you, as a as a coach or as a player, when you see that mentality and you see that quarterback out there and you just think, well, this kid knows what's going on. There's no doubt that he knows. That just that gives confidence to an entire team. And I think that's that that probably right there, one player leading the other ten in that way, is even more important than what he does physically on the field. I agree. Yeah. And you look on – and Orr is another outstanding player. Talk about Orr a little bit, the running back. Man, I mean, he was quick. He was yeah. very quick. And, and, you know, he's quick, but he was also – man, he will hit a hole. When I saw him hitting the hole, he wasn't waiting on a hole to open up. He was going to make the hole if he had to. And you don't see that out of a lot of speed backs. A lot of speed backs want to get to the edge. They want to try to get past people. When I saw him hitting the power, man, he was going. He was hitting that Absolutely. hole, and he was going to move somebody if they were in the hole. And I, that's impressive to see from a kid that's got the type of speed he has. And um, when you flip on the other side, the quarterback matchup is one I want to see. Um, Zach Pyron coming in as a sophomore, he's gained 20 to 20-something pounds. He's gained three inches. His 40 times drop, 2%. Talk about Pyron a little bit, Reggie. Man, um, and he's pretty impressive to be just a sophomore. Uh, I mean, watching him play, you would think he was a, he was a senior that started for four years. Um, he's, he's, got, he's, he's very smart. He knows how to make the plays. He knows how to get the ball. Uh, to his playmakers, I mean, you know, people expect Fife to run the ball all the time, but you have to watch out for his arm because <laughs> he, he'll, he'll, he'll make some passes on you. He can definitely <laughs> throw. So, um, his leadership, too, uh, man, it's, it's a tremendous amount. It has risen a tremendous amount. Yeah, and like I said, it, I mean, you, for a sophomore, you just – I, I don't know, know of a better sophomore quarterback than him. Yeah, overall. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting, man. And then defensively, Fife, uh, you know, they're used to playing a lot of dynamic quarterbacks. Um, they did in the state championship last year. Um, they did, you know, they played Caleb Jones last year. I believe Connellsville jumped out on 14 to nothing, actually. Uh, so, you know, it's, nobody's going to stop a Caleb Jones. I mean, you're not going to stop him. The thing is, can you contain him and hope to let him sit on the sidelines a little bit? And that's what Fife does is they control the clock, control the line of scrimmage, and they, they shorten the game. Let's don't give Caleb Jones 30 touches like North Sand Mountain did, you know. I mean, they, they kept putting him back out on the field. And that's, you know, the best way to defend somebody like Caleb is to let Caleb either play safety if he's going to play both ways or have him on the sidelines watching his defense play. So, again, the matchup, to me, in this game, what's going to be the tail of the tape in this game, and I love both coaches, Willingham, Coach Benefield, love them both, love kids on both sides, um, is going to be can the front seven of Collinsville get off the field consistently against five? Kevin, what do you think? What do you think? Well, i got a question. Does Caleb Jones play defense? Yes, yeah, starting safety. Okay, so I looked, but I, I just – I'm gonna say, and I, I don't know if we're doing picks yet. Well, we don't do picks no more this year. Okay, well, yeah. well, <laughs> well then I, uh, what I was about to say, Fife, uh, just like any ball game, the line of scrimmage is where it starts. And, and Fife, if they can run the ball, uh, I, uh, and if they can keep the like keep the clock, keep Caleb on the sidelines, I think that's gonna be a good chance to. Or at safety making tackles. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I think that'll be. That's what I'm saying. The front seven of Collins will make stop. What five does. And, and five, you know, and at minute five, I, you got to give five the home advantage because playing in that environment is sort of like the college, the high school level playing it, you know, the the swamp or Death Valley or. or They've got the state's <laughs> longest winning streak at home. Really? How many have they? It's like 40. 40. 40. Is it 40 even? Um, home. I think now that's the regular season winning streak is 40. I can't remember what the. Um, Josh, you remember what? I can't remember. We, we knew in Jackson. Is it in the 40s? Yes, it's like in the forties, like one forty something straight. And, so I've, and I've admired, and I hope I'm not giving Collins bullet bullet board material here, but I've always admired the five program. Yeah, and I've always t you know if you're going to have a oh, success, no, Collins actually feels the same way. They they got a lot of respect. Yeah, and, and uh, if uh, if you're going to have a successful high school program, five is the perfect model because they've got the they got the, you know for just a two A school they've got the stadium, they got the uh, great tradition, and and the, the thing I've noticed about them, the fans. 
they're all about the kids. They don't care whose kids are starting or who's not. It's just all about what's best for that team. And a team. lot of communities need to follow that model. I agree with you 100%. Just look it up. Uh, they're sitting at a regular season winning streak of 40. They have a home winning streak of 31. 31, okay. And 251 consecutive games scoring. And I have another state record right now, too. And I have another interesting stat about this game. Causal has not beat five since 1984. Really? Yeah, I did see that today. I didn't know that. Yeah. They hadn't lost a, a, a game in. They hadn't lost a game uh, against a DeKalb County opponent, and I think. Four years or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, two. So yeah. it's going to be interesting. There's a lot of streaks on the line. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> stuff's going to happen right here. All right, that brings us to our next game. This game is going to be Asheville versus FNN, Team of the Year, White Plains, who's coming off a tremendous loss to Hoax Bluff, 45 to 21. Um, Asheville come off a pretty tough loss to Jacksonville. We got Mr. Kevin Moore for AshevilleAthletics.com sitting in with us. Good friend of mine. Everything. I love him to death. Everything <laughs> except he's an Alabama fan. Other than that, you know, he's a good guy, great guy, actually. Um, Kevin, uh, Asheville has actually made some strides, though, from yeah. last year to this year. Yeah, actually, yeah, last year we went 2-8, and eight, uh, had a very good, successful spring game against Southside, 21 to nothing, and we opened the season with a 35 to nothing win over Racklin. Last week, uh, or week two, zero, zero, one, two, whatever you want to call this. Yeah, we'll, we'll call it one. And, uh, we played Springville, and uh, they put 36 points on us last year. We lost to them 10 to seven mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago. We had the ball at the three yard line, had a chance to get in there, couldn't make it. Y'all had it at the three? Huh? I didn't know that. Yeah, we had it at the three, and we, we had the third and go from the three, and uh, we tried a little, uh, a little misdirection play. You know that play that Auburn runs where the running back sits down? Yeah. We ran that and lost the yard. Oh, man. But, but you know, but you know, it, uh, we, we uh, Yardage wise, we we were very competitive with them in the game. We, we could move the ball very well. We got down to three, went for a uh, field goal to, to send it to overtime. Uh, the snap went bad, and they tried to throw it in the end zone for a touchdown. It didn't work. But, uh, mm. but uh, then, of course, Friday night we played the Jacksonville Eagles. Uh, they were angry. Well, well I thought it was Philadelphia ball. Eagles for a little bit. Yeah. So, <laughs> they uh, were but, angry. Uh, but you know, Jacksonville was uh, preseason picked to, uh, by John Holder mm. to be in the state finals. So this wasn't like cottage cheese we were playing. Uh, we, of course, you know, we didn't help ourselves. Uh, we had six turnovers, uh, seven or eight false start holding penalties, mm -hmm. and they, I know they ran two punts back for a touchdown, and I think they, the kickoff. Two punts? Huh? Ooh. They got, hey, anybody out there that's playing Jacksonville, you better contain number four. Ron Higgins, he's yeah. an all-purpose. I mean, I thought uh, I saw speed until I, for the Friday night. Higgins is a real deal. And uh, we couldn't contain him. Uh, but at the same time, not making an excuse to take, give Jackson full credit, had the not. But like I said, just took, you're talking about they've improved, Asheville's improved. If we had not had all the turnovers and all that, I think it would have been a lot closer game. Oh, yeah. And I'll say this about Asheville's defense, because they spent a long time in the offseason trying to, to get, improve that defense. And if our defense plays like we played against Springville, and I'm stepping out here when I say this, I think we can be competitive with anybody on our schedule, and I mean anybody. Now, oh, yeah. of course, now you know we're still kind of still kind of young, and for us to beat uh, some teams that we need to beat to be in the playoffs, we're going to have to play pretty much a perfect game. But if we're off like we did Tuesday night, we're going to get the same results that happened. Um, David, from a coaching standpoint, and like you said, you know, you put in a lot of off-season work to correct something. Um, yeah. What's some of the things you can do to try to get that consistency? Because they played so good against Springville, then flipped around and had a bad game. Albeit, it may have been from a punt return or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I actually know Coach Simmons well, and I think Coach Simmons does a terrific job, and I think he's trying to build something over at Asheville. And a lot of times, the hardest thing to overcome can be the mental game. And, uh, you know, you can have all the physical, all the talented players out there in the world, but. You know, when kids have a, a history of struggling in a in games like that, and, you know, Asheville hadn't had all the success they want to have in the last few years, it's hard to get over that mountain right there. And a lot of times you can preach in those kids' heads all the time, but, uh, you know, when you go out into a game like that and you're playing kids with the caliber of what Jacksonville has, it's hard to get them in the mindset of, hey, we can win this game and not, hey, we've got to survive. And that's a tough hill to climb, but, uh, you know, that's, 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 that's the hardest thing to get. You know, that's the, that's the big mountain. If, if, if everybody could tackle that mountain, everybody would be 10 and 0 coaches. But uh, yeah. Coach, Coach Simmons, I think he will get him there. I, like I said, I've got all the respect in the world for Coach Simmons. I think he's doing a fantastic job over there, and he's just got to change that mindset. I want to add to that. You could not have been more further than the truth. These are great kids. They, uh, uh, they, 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 pr they practice hard. They study hard. And I wouldn't train them for anybody in the world. 
and uh, but that there's this thing when something happens like adversity, it just kind of mentally, it just kind of yeah yeah. At, at one it. at one point uh, in the in the first half, we were down twenty to nine, and we kept having a couple offensive series where the ball where they kept turning the ball over, but the defense hung in there, which is something that hadn't happened in the past. And I thought if we could just get to halftime with twenty to nine. I, I like a chance we just cut the mistakes out, and then right before the second half, for before halftime, they, they loaded two more touchdowns on us. It was thirty-four to nine at the half, mm. and we just couldn't overcome it. Mm. That, that's that's what happens a lot of times when that's what you've experienced and that's what you're used to. It can be hard to take on hits like that and just keep trucking. That's what I told Reggie. I think that's some of, some of the things that Gavin City's went through right now. Yeah, yeah, it can be Honestly. difficult. Um, playing White Plains, though, I mean they're they're coming off a bad loss to Hoax Bluff, so. Um, I definitely think that's going to be a good game. And Asheville's defense shows up and plays like they did mm -hmm. against Springfield. And they, and, and they beat us last year, 30, 32 to 20. So I'm um, hopefully our players are remembering that. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you know, it's two years ago, it's kind of we we beat them on a hail mary, made them by one point. Uh, but of course, and they remember, and they got they got a running back. I forget what his name is, but he's a, he's he's he, misdirection is the name of his game. And if we we get we need to slow him down and, and keep him. He's not as fast as I don't think he's as fast as the Higgins kid from Jacksonville. But we really need to put a stop on him. And, and, and of course, that week, the week after that, we got on and on at home for homecoming of all mm. things. So mm. if we, and, and after that, we have an off week before Hoax Bluff comes to town. So we really need to be, we we really need to be three and two when we get to that off week. Yeah. Because you know, we got some injuries that need to get get taken care of before before the Bluff comes to town. That's a that's mm. a tough little stretch there. Yeah. And then we got to go to Cherokee County. So you know. Believe <laughs> man. Y'all got Murderer's Row. Yeah. Don't you? And at the end of the year, we close with Anderson and Vincent. So. Anderson's one of the most improved teams yeah. in the state. Mm -hmm. All right, our next game is we're going to talk about 300 wins. Danny Horn, Central Clay is 2 and 0, uh, coming off a 34 to 12 victory over Mumford. Uh, then they're playing Springville, who's actually 2 and 1. Started out to a hot start, but actually lost to Silicaga 42 21 last week. Josh, take it away. Man. Uh. Home opener, Danny Horn. Last year, this was a 42 to six win. Um, I, I just, uh, I don't think the cards are lining up for Springville. Uh, you know, last year, uh, Coach said that uh, those three losses that they had might have propelled them to a state championship. I got bad news from. I don't think they'll end up with three losses this year. No, uh, I don't either. I was at the Benjamin Russell game. Uh, Benjamin Russell is a lot better than what they look like against Central Clay uh, because I was giving updates to y'all and I couldn't hardly get my phone in my pocket before I was taking it back out. <laughs> Touchdown, Central Clay. Uh, you know, but I was glad to see Coach get his 300th win. Uh, now we're on to, he got 301, we're moving on to 302. Uh, he, uh, I, I just don't see uh, Quentin Knight uh, is doing a great job. Boyd Ogles at quarterback is uh, they're clicking on all cylinders right now. What do you what What have you seen from Springville? Springville actually, Kev talked about it earlier. They struggled uh, to score against Asheville. Asheville shut them down pretty good. Um, tough gut wrenching win that Springville had against Asheville. Um, I don't see them. Putting up a lot of points versus this defense at Central Clay. Yeah, this is going to be. Where's the horse game going to be played? Home opener for Central Clay. Oh, pray for Springville, bro. That's all. <laughs> hey, you, hey, you'll pull for Alabama before I pull for Springville. <laughs> that so, is a rivalry of yours. Oh yeah, that, that, that ain't. Kev, you want to just get you some popcorn and go drive down to, to check this game out firsthand. I may go sit on their side, Springville side, or wearing a green and white shirt, pulling for, or wearing a Clay shirt. shirt. <laughs> Clay shirt on one side, Asheville on the back. <laughs> That'd be beautiful. Um, final thoughts on the game, Josh? Uh, I think Central Clay wins going away. Um, you know, when when I talked with Coach Horn, he, uh, which this was an interesting fact, uh, during that Benjamin Russell game, uh, he coached every player that was on the field, that touched the field, because he this was his second year he had from leaving Benjamin Russell. Uh, so... Uh, when he got that, so he coached everybody on the other field. On yes. the other field. So when when he got win number three hundred, uh, he I, I sat there for an hour waiting on him to get done. Everybody in that stadium come by and shook his hand. Uh, so that's awesome. But yeah, I think they I think he gets a three hundred two. Awesome.
All right, so the next game we're going to talk about is going to be Gadsden City versus Austin. This one's actually on the road again. Mm-hmm. Gadsden City, Reggie, last week was actually leading at halftime, correct? Correct. They were up 21-20. Um, I wasn't able to attend that game last week. I had a prior engagement I had to attend, but um, I was getting custom score updates, um, and I was sitting at the reception, and I got an update at halftime that Gadsden City was up 21-20. Uh, Sparkman made uh, they made a few mis- Sparkman made a few mistakes in the first half. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, they jumped. Sparkman jumped out to a 14 nothing lead and uh, some costly fumbles. Uh, led Gaston City back in the game and they kind of got the momentum right before halftime and uh, scored and went up by one point. And uh, I'm thinking, okay, we got the lead at halftime. They got the momentum. They're going to come out in, in the second half. But uh, I think they s- mistakes went. You know, Gaston City had the mistakes in the second half, and that kind of kind of cost them a little bit. Um, big loss for Ricky Wright. He's gonna be out for the season. Um, shoulder injury. Yeah, that's a huge loss. He didn't get to play. What? I think plays? this. Like, I think uh, eight, nine plays, something like that. Man, so. it, it just bad luck just keeps rolling in, man, for Ali and, and the boys. Yeah. Um, David, from a, a coaching standpoint, when 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 you're sitting zero and three like this, how do you pull <clears> yourself out of it? Yeah, I mean, I've I've been in several of these situations where you get to a place and you're you're a, you're a new, well, even though they're you know, Coach Smith's been there for a while, but a new coaching staff, and you're trying to fix the mentality that's there, and you know something like that, it just feels like things just keep piling on top of you. You're just waiting on one thing to happen for the dam to break and things just to go right, and it can be so hard to wait on that one thing, and you just got to keep preaching to the kids that you know this is gonna work if you keep working hard. And sometimes it can be a hard task to preach that to kids that are in the mentality of this thing going wrong and it going down the hill. It can be a hard thing to fix. But, uh, you know, all you can do is just keep working hard. You've got to keep preaching that working hard leads to the, the breakthrough. And, uh, you know, I mean, eventually it will come. But, you know, you got to keep fighting that fight. And that's an uphill fight. But uh, I guess the city with the talent they have, it's going to turn around. Um, Reggie, talk about Austin, their opponent they're playing. This. They're 3-0 and right now. Yeah, they're 3-0. and um, Austin moved up to 7A uh, from 6A. Um, last year, and uh, they had they had they had a couple of deep playoff runs um, before they moved up to six. I think Pinson Valley, Valley knocked them out of the playoffs a couple of times, and um, they uh, they've got to start out pretty strong this year. Uh, they they beat uh, three quality teams so far to start the season. Um, so Austin's one of those teams you can't you can't really look over there. Uh, I know in the past they've always been known to have uh, have you know really strong. Uh, power backs, and I'm pretty sure I think that's what they um, on offense. I think that's what they're going to have again this year. And I hope they get get it going, man. And um, yeah. Reggie, I'm gonna pitch it to you for the Coach Ali Smith show uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, yes. Uh, come out Chick Fil A Wednesday from five to seven, um, and uh, we start filming the Coach Ali Smith show at six o'clock. Uh, we want to invite. Uh, community, uh, parents, fans, cheerleaders, band members, just anybody associated with Gaston City High School, come out and show support for these guys and let them know we're still behind them. 100%. Yep. They need more, you know, obviously they need more support now than, than ever, you know, while they're right. in the current losing streak at their own. Um, all right, so let's talk about Hoax Bluff and Aniana. Um, Hoax Bluff 2-0, and coming off a of 45-21 drumming of uh, effing antimony here at White Plains. Uh, Aniana is one and one and uh, now this is going to be one of the tough games because Hope's Bluff's going on the road. Um, Jay, you played it at a wall. Talk about some of those environments when you go on the road away from home and you're playing a team that's a dominant team throughout history. Uh, mm-hmm. How your mindset is approaching that game when you know when you get off the bus it could be 14 and nothing because referees and fans and everything. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> It, it could be. Some environments are hostile, some aren't not as intimidating, but uh, some of them can be really intimidating. Like, you know, you walk in and, like, you see, like, for example, it's, I mean, this is basketball, but we walked into J.L. Johnson and the goals were bent, and we knew what time it was. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> this ain't going to be good, boys. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, you just gotta go on with that mindset. You know, we're here to play. We're here to play football. You know, it's just we're not at home. They're gonna put their pads on just like we do. We just gotta go out there, stick to the game plan, and play. That's all you gotta do. I mean, you know, you're gonna you got a fan base coming. It may not be the home fan base, but I mean, 
just you know focus on the game plan block all the negatives out just go out there and play all right and all right so one thing that does travel and I'm gonna let you talk about this a, a little bit David defense travels oh, defense absolutely. is very very good um, Talk about that defense uh, and what they need to do to keep on the crowd quiet down. Yeah. I, I want to add a little bit to what just Jay just said, too. I remember uh, one of the games back when I was playing. I remember walking into a rivalry game one time. These two were close enough to be rivals. Mm -hmm. I remember walking into a rivalry game. We were walking into the stadium off the bus with our pads. We're getting all cussed by the band on the way in. They <laughs> <laughs> telling us what's about to happen to us all the way in. You know? And you know, you sit there and you look sideways at it, but it's like, okay, you know, it kind of makes you focus in too. All of a sudden, you're like, okay, so this is how it's going to be. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, Hoax Plus defense, man, alive. Uh, they, they have got enough. Uh, Coach Rob, I mean, I love the way he coaches. And uh, I've watched that defense out there, and, you know, to watch them shut out south side to watch them you know i don't know when the points were scored here for white plains but when you get up 45 sometimes you can lose a little focus sometimes yeah, so that's uh but you know the just the the way the way they are able to contain people from sideline to sideline and then uh they've got a secondary that's got the athletes that can you know if you've got more than one receiver they can hold on to them and keep them out of the uh out of getting deep so uh just the way they play defense they're an aggressive type defense the defensive line is good at standing the offensive line up and keeping them from Pulling, keeping them from blocking down. Uh, the type of defense they play, it's the type of defense to give any type of offense fits. Um, Reggie and the ace factor, <laughs> the two studs on offense, man, they're Ooh. always there. Ashton and Darian. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I think the, these two guys that are going to step up, man, they, of course, they will be the X factor in this game. And I, 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 Darian, you know, every team they're going to key in on Darian. So Ashton, is going to be the one that Honey Gunners going to, to look out for, because if they're going to contain Darian Ashton, we've seen already he can, you know, take the ball and 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 run it in himself. <clears throat> so uh, these two are definitely going to make a difference in this game. And uh, one side note, this is Honey Gunners' home opener, so they're definitely going to have a big crowd out oh, that night as well. So. Now, uh, Will Clemens, which we just did a one-on-one -on -one for defensively. You know, you was talking about them standing those line up. That's when Will definitely comes and cleans up because that guy is absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, yeah he is unbelievable. And, um, you know, if you guys haven't seen the video, please check it out. Great kid. We put it up. It's only been up a few days. It's already up close to 800 views, which is pretty phenomenal, man, for a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. I think Hoax Bluff's going to do very good in this game because the things Hoax Bluff does is the type things that, that – gets crowds out of games mm -hmm. um just like coach rob said they run it right at you which is demoralizing <laughs> and then um when you key on darian that's when you see ashton break out um and then like you said their defense is solid you know they don't give up big plays they got some athletes on defense and at the end of the day they're just tough i mean yeah. they're, well they're, they're built for for road going on the road in football so yeah <laughs> I, I think host plus can be fine in this one. Oh yeah definitely Southside's off this week, um, so we're going to move on to Ohatchee in Cleveland. Uh, Dominic Thomas is our buddy, and Diana Ford, Farmers Insurance Player of the Week. We're going to feature Dominic Thomas at the Gridiron. By the time this video drops, it'll be tonight at 6.30. Uh, they are playing Cleveland. Now, Cleveland will score some points on you. They just won 65-44 against uh, West End. <laughs> The bad part about that is they are playing a juggernaut on offense. Um, before you dig into their offense and Ohatchee's offense, Reggie, West End put up 40, 44, 45 points on this team. They did. Uh, <coughs> that's not voting too good for Cleveland. <laughs> nope, not with, uh, not with Dominique Thomas in the, in the backfield. Yeah. Um, uh, Ohatchee in their first two games scored 55 points and 47 points. Um, if they uh, Cleveland gave up forty five to West End, Ohatchee could put sixty on them. Uh, they could name their score. Yeah, yeah, probably. Josh, talk from watching Ohatchee last week. He called the dogs off after three carries. Talk about that performance. Well, it was kind of funny. Uh, I messaged everyone and said, "Hey, Dominic Thomas, Player of the Week. That's my vote." And. Um, I didn't know how many carries he had or how many yards he had. I just knew he had a great game. So I called him and uh, talked to him and I asked him, I said, hey, do you know your stat line? And he said, well, I had three rush attempts, 
168 yards, <laughs> uh, uh, two touchdowns. And God. I said, I said, my phone, my phone cut out. How many rush attempts did you say you had? And he had three rushing attempts. And oh what did he give him for? <laughs> well, I can tell you one. Uh, <laughs> there's actually a funny story, and um, so. Coming out of halftime, uh, he uh, he asked would he be able to play in the second half, and uh, the offensive coordinator told him, he said, uh, probably not. He said, but I may let you field this uh, kickoff. And Dominic, as he's walking past me, he said, I'm going to take it back. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> I'm walking out, and I'll be dadgum if he didn't score. Now. Here's the rough part of that story. I went back and watched it because I was filming it. He did score, but they claimed that he stepped out at the one. But wow. instant replay at the Abercrombie's has him scoring that touchdown. But You know, I, I, I briefly, when he told me he had three rush attempts, I briefly reconsidered player of the week, to be honest with you, because, I mean, how are you going, but when you when he's averaging 55 yards a carry, uh, and he's averaging 21 yards a carry on the season, so. Jesus. Mm. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to say when they run into some, Tougher competition, but I don't think that's going to happen until the playoffs. Well, now Coach Martin is going to get is he's going to jump out. Yeah, next me. next week they're going to run into some competition. They're going to play Westbrook. Mm. Oh yeah, that's right. I yeah, they'll, they'll hit some competition there. Yeah, uh, that that's going to be. Yeah, they'll know how good they good. are, and Westbrook's going to know how good they are in that game early on. We'll have two average Joes going up against each other. That's right. Two two well known average Joes. That that would be a fun. Battle to watch. Uh, Nominating you know, John John Reese. That, it's really mm -hmm. heartbreaking. It's bittersweet when you see two average Joes. Uh, we watched Chance Disgusting. Moon and Darian Moon, uh, Darian Darian Meads and Chance Moon go up against each other. Great, great battle. Yeah. Uh, then this week we're gonna watch you know Fife and Collinsville, so Pyron and it, it's Taylor bittersweet Jones. when we see two of the teams that we follow play each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's. It's not no fun. That's the downside of this. <laughs> uh, we didn't. We didn't ever think we'd get that attached to people. You know, but no. You, you do, and it and it and it, it's yeah. not fun to no. watch. You know, uh, and I think Coach Benefield said it best. He goes, you know, every single week that, that we're winning, everybody's happy. You look across that field, and you got fans and players and coaches and band members and cheerleaders that's upset because they just lost. And he said people don't realize that how how important you know how precious it is to win and how you know right across from you somebody's got to lose man and what they're going through and how how it's not fun and it ain't no good to go through that you know? but i can guarantee he's also thinking better than than me exactly <laughs> yeah. uh, he's the all-time and as far as i know he's the all-time percentage winning coach in state of alabama history mm -hmm. he's rocking around 85 percent right now i think we'll be and i don't want to jinx him or anything but I think Reggie said we'll be doing his 300th win next season. Next yes, season, if everything falls in place, some at some point next season, we'll be doing this. He, I think he's at what 283 right now. Two, yeah, 284, I think now. Okay, so yeah, it's it's creeping up. Might get it for him this season if it works out right. Well, they got. No, he won't get it this season. If they was 15 and 0, he would get one. Um, 290 something. He won't hit 300 this yeah. season. I, I did the math right. already. <laughs> I was trying to figure that one out. Yeah. Well, guys, I think that's it. You guys got anything else? Appreciate you guys having me on the show. Hey, man. We loved it, man. Mm -hmm. We, we want to have you guys one hour or so. Slow week in college, but oh, uh, a great week in high school. That's good, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Golly, I would, this is the oldest week you wish you could clone yourself, man. I, I know. I'm torn on which game I'm going to this week. <laughs> I got a so. feeling. I think I know where Reggie's going. <laughs> well, hey, y'all are lucky. My wedding anniversary Friday night, and I've got to go up to take my wife out. Like, I, Well, I guess I shouldn't say it like that. Hey, you know what's better? What, hey, you know what, though? What's better than taking your wife out to a high school football game? And buying her a hot dog. That's right. Take yeah. her. 
Take her Nachos up. with the peppers. <laughs> take her up to the take her up to the devil's den, man, and five. Let's watch it. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. <laughs> Better get there early. That's a romantic hey, date. Hey, y'all won't be able to move. That concession stand up at five is for real. That's oh, a real deal. Hey, you can buy socks up in there. <laughs> 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 they do got a separate. They do got a separate building for socks yeah, and apparel, yeah. man. They're yeah. all hey, the five uh, gear is in high demand. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They sold out at Van Day. I, I'd imagine there's visitors that come there and end up buying five gear. Oh, <laughs> Speaking of concession stands, I want to give a shout out to Collinsville's concession stand. I told them they've got the best steak sandwich you'll find anywhere. You was in the told state. that by your friend, and, and then you didn't believe him. Man, alive, that thing was fantastic. Yeah, the fact that they have a steak sandwich, sandwich is amazing. Steak yeah. Sandwich. yeah. He said one of his buddies had told him about it, and he didn't. He didn't. He's like, ah. and he said he went and got it. He's like, no, nah, he's he's, he's telling the truth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna shut this one down. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave comments, likes, whatever. Hey, we we love it all. All kind of interaction. Thank you guys.